Probably the two best rods I reckon we've ever made. Yeah, look at it, look at it. It's a ball, it's a ball. It's like every second cast at the moment we're going for. Probably my favorite rod that I've got, and I know it's yours now as well. Yeah, I got another one. There we go, yeah. A lot of people fish that little land-based, you know, young guys walking around the flats chasing whiting and stuff, so. Oh my God. <laughs> right, so this video has two parts to it, two parts to it. On one side, every now and again as a reviewer, you get your hands on a product that is above the rest. You can tell it is better than anything else that you've tried on the market before. And today I'm gonna to share with you something that has given me great joy in using since I got my hands on it last November. So what's that, uh, just under 12 months now. Yeah. Technically, I was actually under product embargo for nine months, which means that I'm not allowed to talk about it, but because this product gave me so much joy and really injected this sense of satisfaction into my fishing, I kind of was a bit cheeky and I used it anywhere. I didn't care. It's actually been in most of my videos for the last 12 months. Daiwa, who have come up with this product, have actually been watching your comments on line to see whether or not I was going to get in trouble. Now, only one person has actually seen it and mentioned it, and that was Josh D. Fishing, another YouTuber. So I kind of got away with it, but in this video, I've literally been almost risking it all because I've just enjoyed this thing so much. And I know that I am not the only one who thinks that. Everybody that has been on the tournament boat, either at a round like a co-angler or a non, uh, a non-boater as the sun comes out has said that this rod this fishing rod is either the best fishing rod that they have flat out ever used or it is one of the best that they have used and it's my opinion that every fisherman in Australia that is in the light tackle game should have this as part of their quiver now I did say that there are two sides to this coin and that's because this rod that I think is absolutely legendary is one of four that Daiwa have released this year. Now, one of them is outstanding. There's two that are good that we'll talk about in this video, but one, one is, is, uh, one is, I, I can't recommend and I don't think it's good at all. Sorry, Daiwa. I should say as well, there is a giveaway. <laughs> Honestly, the wind, the wind has kicked up here. Yeah, it's a bit windy, so we are, um, I've got a bee in here. I've had to move. All right, we've gone somewhere with a little less wind. Now, in the last two years, if you're unaware, maybe you're new to the game, but the last two years, one rod range has really dominated all of the tournament anglers rod lockers. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in a bass boat or a normal boat or you're in the boating scene or you are in the kayaking scene. The 20 in feet rod range from Daiwa has absolutely dominated. There's something in there for everybody and it covers three different price ranges. Now, under the radar this year at AFTER, they released four new rods to those ranges and I have had those rods since November last year. And that is what we are going to talk about today. The four rods that are sitting right here. Now, the split goes uh, in two groups. Two of the rods that were released are on the $199 affordable range and two of the rods that come out are also on the Z series. So they're $369 uh, range. Now, in this video, we are giving away three rods of the $369 type. I'll talk about what that is in a minute in the giveaway that will come later in the video. But for the moment, I'm gonna run through the other three rods really quickly and tell you exactly what I think about them. As always, these standard caveats apply. So this isn't a sponsored review. Daiwa didn't pay me for this, but I did go to their office and interview them over a bunch of different products that are coming out over the next few months. And you will see some shots here that I'll include so you get some background information on each of these products. Now, firstly, let's talk about the good. So this is a 752 LFS. 75 makes it long and it is specifically for throwing top water. You can see here I've got an OSP bent minnow, but it absolutely launches light lures a country mile. It's got a nice and 
crisp tip to it. And the crisp tip is really important here because it makes it really easy to be able to work that lure that might be sitting 40 odd meters away. But because it's a long rod that's not particularly thick, whenever a fish gets hold of your lure, it does buckle over and protect the hooks really well. As you know, most of the rods in the in feet range are designed to specifically do something for the angler. And in my opinion, the top water rod has been missing. So it's a really nice welcome inclusion into the range. At $199, it really is good value. And I've just noticed these, uh, there's rusty hooks all over this, so I'm gonna have to change that lure out. That rod is basically made around the Slippery Dog 80. So when we knew we were making Slippery Dog in the 80, 80 mil size, uh, we knew we wanted a rod for, for casting that lure around. So. Um, seven foot five, obviously most people fish that kind of, a lot of people fish that lure land based, you know, young guys walking around the flats chasing whiting and stuff. So seven foot five, long casting distance. And then that uh, LFS, not a ULFS, because the fact that you're casting a 80 mil lure that weighs, you know, a fair bit of weight. So mm. it's a, it's an awesome top water rod that one. Now the second technique specific rod out of the four that has come to the market is this right here. It's the 732 ULFS. Now it is a sister or brother, if you like, to the 732 LFS. That's one of most one of the most successful in feet rods that is on the market. It's basically the same rod but stepped down twice in the action. So it's less stiff, it's more flexible, and that is designed to cater for anybody that is looking for a blade rod. And that extra, I guess, uh, softness is in it softness in the rod is designed so that it takes care of the trebles when it is loaded up. It's a really nice rod. Now, $369 this thing goes for. The Blade Freak from Miller goes for like $580, $570 odd now. Is this as good as that? Such a tough call to make because one is a couple of hundred dollars more. I certainly... I certainly wouldn't wouldn't say it's better than the Miller. It's certainly on par if you're going to call it that. But if I was looking for something a little bit more affordable to throw blades around or maybe learn about blading because I didn't want to make that huge investment into a high-end blade rod, well then I'd probably go this first. Well, no, actually I would go this first and know that it doubles well as a soft plastics rod, which is how I've been using it. I'm not sure if I can get that into focus there, but... Um, uh, all those marks are from jig heads uh, that I've planted into the EVA. So, uh, really nice rod. So again, we had that 732 LFS, which is probably the um, most popular in the Z range. You know, it's the most well... Uh, Sold. Uh, yeah, it is probably the best seller, but it's also probably the most universal. What I wanted was a lighter version of that same kind of taper for mm. either fishing a very light plastic or it works exceptionally well fishing a blade. Um, we didn't really have a uh, specific blade rod. So that 732 ULFS, I love it for fishing a blade. So like pit water flats, hopping a blade around the uh, mooring box or something like that, that's my go-to now for blades. Now the third rod that I do not recommend that is in this re-release is this rod right here. It's $199, it's the 702 ULFS. Now, it is a little stiff down here, but it is a wiggly worm at the top and it continues to go and look at it continuing to go now. Now, we all know that a good rod recovers well after a cast. This rod does not recover well after a cast. It's gonna affect your pinpoint accuracy when you cast the lure out. And when you're working a lure back, that top of the, that, that tip basically folds the rod in half. It is absolutely gross. I do not like it at all. For me, for this rod, I've just tried to use it so many times over the last 11 months, and every time that I use it, I just find myself putting it back down. I want to put it back down now. I don't want to use it. I want to move on, because the next rod is like the polar opposite. I've got two rods in the middle that are good. I've got one rod there that is just poo, and then I've got this rod on the side that is absolutely legendary that I think everybody should have, and that is this bad boy here. I've actually got two of them. Best rods. I reckon we've ever made. It is the 712 LFS. Now this one right here is the uh, is the latest release. It's brand new. It looks the part. It's actually got all the markings that an infeed should have on it. And this one here is my original one that uh, does not have any of the markings on it. So those two right here, the best rods that I have ever used. Now I'm going to put these down, but that sun is just coming out now. 
This rod is the opposite to what I said about the other rod. This rod, I want to continually pick it up. I want to find an excuse every single time I go fishing to pick this rod up and use it. And I, I love it. Uh, it is my favorite rod. I don't know how many times I can say that. It is my favorite rod. It is a banger and has accounted for so many big fish in the last 11 months since I have been using it. I always want to pick it up. I want to find an excuse to fish with it. And it's in the Z series and it'll cost you 369 bucks. Now I'm going to show you some footage over the top, but for me, there are three three big reasons that this rod has really excelled. The first is that this rod really excels at making light lures twitch and roll in the most precise way. I've never had a rod that has twitched or jerked a lure anywhere near as good as this one has. Yep, there we go. Right there. Oh, look at that. Yeah, buddy! Yeah. <laughs> look at that too! <laughs> oh, look at it! Mate! Look at the belly! <laughs> my god! Oh my god! That is fat! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, how good is that? Think to yourself that whole series of double clutches, maybe from 75, 60, and 48. SX40s from Echo Gear, the long cast or the short, whatever they're coming out with now, the Spike 44s, either the deeps or the shallows, the MW62s, or the new Shazanami uh, lures that I'll be doing a review in a moment about, all the riggy zip baits. But that is the first place that this rod excels in that jerk bait space. I, I haven't come across a rod that is more enjoyable to use for that than this one. Then it's rolled around 10 o'clock and they've come on the bite, eh? Yeah, I got another one. There we go. Yeah. Now, secondly, this rod is awesome for beginners because the blank, the rod tip, the guide train provide a significant amount of feedback to an angler. So if you're an angler that is just getting into hard bodies and you really rely on the feedback in the rod to make decisions about what to do with the lure and really understand what the lure is doing, well, this rod is going to give you a great appreciation for that. 100% you will learn faster and you will get more fish because of it. Now, thirdly, because it has that sensitive tip that I keep going on about, it actually makes for a really nice, lightly weighted soft plastics rod. It's a really good all-rounder in this space. Now, I wouldn't use it any for anything heavier than 112. I think it's really good from that, like that 116 and up. In particular, lightly weighted or unweighted aquas in around structure or over the flats. I've caught a bunch of fish with this using it in that way. And I think that's gonna play well for a kayak or maybe someone that can only afford a couple of rods. You can have your crankbait beginner jerkbait rod here. And then if you need to switch to a lightly weighted soft plastics, maybe the fish uh, are only eating aquas, for example, on a day, or the gulp crabby is another example, then this rod is going to be good at that also. Fundamentally, this rod is classified as a fast rod. So it will always be suited for soft plastics. I just think it's better suited for unweighted or lightly weighted soft plastics in particular. The action of the rod and the balance of the rod are really what sets this rod apart. I've paired it with reels from the 1000, the 2000, and the 2500 size as well, but I think the 2000 is the best size for it. It'll happily take straight through fluorocarbon, but in my opinion, the braid leader combination with a double rod length of leader is the way to go on this rod. In terms of weight, they do come in like a lot of the Infeet series under 100 grams and weigh the same amount as a large size egg and there's really no problems in holding these all day. They are my favorite rods and you will find the boat, this boat or any boat that I'm using, we, I will have two of these on there. One will permanently have my favorite favorite lure on there. I'm trying to get it in focus, but the other one will be going through a rotation to try and work out what exactly the fish are 
are eating, whether that is a minnow or a soft plastic or a lightly weighted plastic, that second one will have lures constantly change on it as I try and figure out what's going on for the day. As I prepare to go to the States, no, 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 I will not be selling these rods. They are going to go into storage here in Australia so that if I ever come back for a tournament or a trip or just to go fishing for whatever, these are the rods that I am going to use for that. Now, I love them so much. Like I said, we are going to give three of those away. Now, a little bit different. So I'm gonna give two away to the members of the channel. You're gonna to have to do this as standard things that I'll go through in a sec, but also I'll be giving one away to non-members of the channel, to people who are under the age of 18 that might not be able to afford membership. So if you're under the age of 18, you can enter. Obviously you can use your dad's account. I'm not gonna get upset about that stuff. Just, you know, be honest here. But to enter, you need to like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment below and tell me what models that you would like to see in the Infeet series. If you want more shorter rods, that is around about the 6.4, because there's only one 6.4, I think there should be shorter models around the 6.4, maybe one for like, crankbaits well then tell me in the comments what you think now if you're a student and you like the big blocks of data and you think you're great well then write a big block of data if not just describe for me if there is a rod that you would like to see in the in-feet range now there might already be in there it really doesn't matter just have a go and get involved if you think that that ex rod sleeve is no good like i do well then you know, if you want skeleton grips, well then comment below and tell me that you want skeleton grips. It is really easy. Now, the second thing that you need to do if you're over the age of 18 to get two of these rods is to be a member of the channel. Now, membership costs a dollar a week and helps me stay independent. Fuel's obviously quite expensive, so is all the camera gear that I've got on here and the time and effort, obviously, that goes into it. I really appreciate your support. There's a bunch of channel members on there at the moment. If you are under 18 though, I understand that you might not have a job and entering membership might be a little bit difficult. So to include you guys in that space, you guys can just comment below. You don't have to be members at all, but if you do win, I will ask for a little bit of ID. We didn't have like a, a more standard length, you know, seven-ish foot fast taper, either a, you know, a light plastics kind of rod for fishing 20th or 16th or something, or twitching a jerkbait. Mm. Um, so I knew I wanted something like that, so I actually took that, that 712 LFS, is, is it started life as the EX model 702 LFS. Uh, I took that mandrel and that design and adapted it and changed it a bit to, to give a little bit more tip. Uh, a little bit less power, like it's a fraction less power than, than the EX model. Um, but importantly, I wanted more tip. So when you're twitching a jerkbait, you've got that little bit more tip to kind of play with and, and to work the lures with. And then, you know, personally, I think the Z series is probably my favorite in feats. I like, I like the real seat, I like the, the comfort of that design. Um, and so like that 712Z is probably my favorite rod that that I've got, and I know it's yours now as well. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. Remember the giveaway. I'll see you next time.